Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. Today I'm hanging out in the mountains of southwestern Pennsylvania and I have a brief video for you today. I'm not going to go in depth on any one particular topic except for the mushroom in question which I'm going to show you in just a couple of seconds. But I'm out here in the mountains specifically looking for a tree which is the mountain ash tree. This is a tree that's not too commonly encountered in Pennsylvania unless you get into the higher elevations. So I'm currently at about 2,700 feet above sea level and once you get into the rocky outcrops, you have a good chance of finding mountain ash. And I just needed some fall foliage footage and I needed some fruit footage. And I got both of those, thankfully. Some of the birds got to some of the fruits, but some of the shrubs and trees still had some fruits on them. And on my way out, I thought I'd look for a specific mushroom, which is the maitake mushroom or hen of the woods. This is a good year to find it. However, it's been pretty dry here in western Pennsylvania over the past couple of weeks. And in fact, all year, we haven't had a significant amount of rainfall. Last night we had some rainfall, so I decided to come out and see if I could find anything. Not really expecting my Taki to just pop up overnight, but I thought, well, while looking for other mushrooms, maybe I'll stumble across some my Taki or Hen of the Woods. And I found a couple trees with small specimens of Hen of the Woods fruiting, and I decided to pass them up, leaving them behind maybe for other foragers once they get bigger. I thought, you know what, if I leave them behind, maybe I will be rewarded by finding a tree just loaded with bigger specimens. And I found some other trees with smaller specimens and finally I came to a tree that's worth checking out. So it's right behind the camera. Let me turn this camera around and show you what I found. Okay, so check out this beautiful specimen of Hen of the Woods, the maitake mushroom, Griffola frondosa. This is one of the easiest mushrooms to positively identify and I encourage you to learn how to identify it and learn how to find it if you've never done such a thing before because it's one of the tastiest edible mushrooms that's out there and it's a favorite amongst many people. It grows during the autumn season, it's a polypore mushroom and I've got plenty of videos on this fungus and there's a lot of information online and field guides to help you positively identify this fungus. But there are no toxic lookalikes to this one so it's definitely a good mushroom for beginners. So the maitake mushroom right here is fruiting from the base of a dead oak tree, probably an oak tree. I say probably because it's hard for me to tell this tree is thoroughly debarked, but I'm guessing that this is an oak tree for two reasons. Number one, I'm taking a look around and I see a lot of living northern red oak trees. And also this one typically fruits at the base of oak trees. I tend to find this at the base of northern red oak trees and other oak trees as well. Now there are some other trees in here like red maple. There's also mountain ash, as I said, right at the edge. There's witch hazel, there's other things as well. So a lot of woody plants, but the taller trees, the bigger ones, the ones that I'm seeing, this mushroom associated with would be northern red oak trees. So if we take a look around the tree, there are a couple more, and that's a tip if you've never found this mushroom before, and you do see one, well, look around the tree because you will probably, in most cases, find one more, maybe two more, maybe three or four or five or even more than that. So I found another smaller specimen. I might leave that one behind to let it mature. Maybe somebody else will find it. Maybe an animal will eat it or it'll just decompose and return some important organic material back into the earth. And I did find another bigger one. I'm not sure if it's bigger than this first specimen right here, but after I harvest it, I can put it side by side and see who is the bigger maitake mushroom. So what are we going to do with this maitake mushroom? Well, first I'm going to harvest it. I'm just going to pull it up. I'll probably use a knife later and trim off some of the pieces that look like they've got a lot of soil on them or pieces that are really tough. And I understand that some people harvest those pieces, they'll clean it off and they'll add them to soup stock so they'll dehydrate them and powder them. And I do use a lot of those pieces as well, but the ones that are thoroughly caked on with dirt and soil, I'll probably leave those pieces behind. So let me see how easily this one pulls up. Comes up really easily, just pop. And look at the size of this beauty right here. This is huge. <laughs> This is heavy as well. I do have a brown paper bag, so I'll put this in the brown paper bag. And yeah, there's a lot of debris in the bottom of this. And I'm going to be careful not to put the top of this on the ground because then all this will get some soil on it. It'll get some of the leaves on it. And I'll have to clean that off when I get home. So I want to keep this as clean as I possibly can. But if you look at the bottom of this, you'll see there's some bark, there's some sticks, there's some leaves. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are maybe some animals in here or at least some insects hiding out. But look how beautiful the bottom is. You can see the pores are nice and tight. They're white, they're not really dark. It smells great as well. So I'm really happy with this specimen right here. 
and I'll probably grab the other one as well. I might have to make a separate trip back here to grab that one. And once I bring these home, I'll clean them out even more. And I'll cook as much of this as I possibly can over the next couple of days, but I'll probably dehydrate a lot of this. And I really like to dehydrate the maitake mushroom because whenever it comes to wild edible mushrooms, very few dehydrate as well and rehydrate as well as Hen of the Woods, the maitake mushroom. And I store them in glass mason jars and they'll store for years as long as you keep them away from heat, light, and oxygen. And I rehydrate them typically in slow cooker meals or in soups. Many times I'll just crush up the pieces and throw them in, then add some bigger pieces for texture. And it's absolutely delicious. This is one of the best tasting wild edible mushrooms. It's got a nice meaty texture and taste. So I am super thrilled and super grateful to find these right at the base of this dead oak tree. Okay, so here are the two mushrooms harvested side by side. You can see how beautiful they are. You can see how big they are as well. I believe the first one that I harvested is just a little bigger. This is the one that was around the tree and it turns out that it's just a tad smaller, I think, but regardless, they're both beautiful specimens. You can see how big these things are right here. So this will provide plenty of food for many months to come, if not years, because these things can store very well for a very long time. So I decided to leave that third one behind, that smaller one. I probably won't come back to visit it in time to harvest it. It'll probably just go to spore and probably just decompose right in place. Unless somebody comes here, if you know where this location is, well, feel free to come and grab that one. But I'll leave that one behind. I'm not gonna come back just because this place is a little farther away than I'm used to exploring. And my main reason for coming here today was not because of these mushrooms, it was because of the mountain ash. I wanted to capture footage of the mountain ash to see it in fruits and luckily I was able to do that. And honestly, some of my best mushroom hunts end up just like that. I'm looking for something else or I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just out to enjoy the day, maybe just enjoying the foliage in the fall and I come across some mushrooms and that's kind of what happened today. In the back of my mind, I knew that, you know, it's my taki season, maybe I'll see something, but I'm not gonna spend hours and hours and hours looking for it. But fortunately, it didn't take me too long. Found the mountain ash, check. Came out a little farther away from the trail, found my taki mushrooms, check. Found enough of them. I probably don't even need to look around too much more. But knowing me, I'll probably start scanning more bases of trees as I maneuver my way out of these woods. So again, my talkie mushroom, hen of the woods, griffola frondosa, choice edible mushroom. I know I didn't go over too many key identifying features in this video, but there are plenty of videos online. So if you just search on YouTube for hen of the woods or my talkie mushroom and learn your land, you'll see a couple other videos. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you can get out and find some my talkie mushrooms this season. <laughs>